Mr Speaker. Honourable Trevor Mallow. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm uh, pleased to follow the attorney uh, on this bill, the attorney acting for the Prime Minister, and I understand uh, why the Prime Minister is not uh, prepared to uh, debate, come to the House and debate this bill uh, today. It, I, I think it's, uh, it's a very brave minister in the yes minister sense uh, who would lead a debate uh, on this bill, uh, given uh, the events uh, of the last couple of weeks. And I say that I'm happy to follow the attorney here. I wouldn't be happy uh, to follow him in a backroom tour of Te Papa. Uh, when his officials have indicated uh, that a pregnant or menstruating woman uh, would not be welcome to go on that tour. So I say, I say, to, that, I say, to, the, I say to the attorney... Point of order, order Honourable Chris Finlayson. I know the member's rather disturbed, but that is completely irrelevant yeah. to the debate and he should focus on the debate. Uh, well, well let, me, let me make this point first. The member should not refer to any attitudes he has about a member when he makes a point of order, and, and that bit was out of order. However, in regard to the nature of the content of a second reading debate, it, standing orders and speakers' rulings is quite precise, and I ask the member to just have a look at standing orders uh, 105, 6 through page 106. Uh, they are and have to pertain to the matter contained in the bill. So in that regard, the member is outside of what the debate permits in a second reading. Trevor Mallow. Yes, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, it is good to see the government being so sensitive to the requirements of the standing orders without referring to your ruling, which I don't at all. Uh, Mr Speaker, what I was saying is that it is a pleasure to follow the attorney on this bit of legislation. I wouldn't follow him very far on, in other areas. Uh, well, including, including to Papa uh, on a backroom tour. Well, there's a number of reasons why I wouldn't follow him in that particular circumstance. Uh, Mr Speaker, I am pleased to uh, follow uh, the attorney because there was a sense of nostalgia uh, for me in dealing with the Civil List Act or the Governor-General uh, bill and that it was uh, while I was a member of the Statutes Revision uh, Committee, uh, chaired at the time by, by Trevor de Clean, uh, and on which the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Justice uh, sat, Geoffrey Palmer, the very first piece of legislation that I dealt with that select committee uh, was in this area. Uh, but Mr Speaker, I think the focus uh, of this debate today is likely to be slightly different to, to what would have been there uh, if it had been debated a couple of weeks ago, uh, because the likelihood of the type of person who is to be the beneficiary of these changes uh, has become an issue in the, um, in the public, uh, and the Prime Minister's views on that, uh, as expressed on television New Zealand, uh, when the issue of the future Governor-General, who is to be the beneficiary of this legislation, have been widely condemned. And in fact, one of the themes I'm going to develop, Mr Speaker, is whether the affordability of this legislation has been affected by the Prime Minister's comments on television, which would have increased, and, and on Radio Waitia, where he indicated that Television New Zealand was to blame, as well as Mr Henry for the comments, whether this legislation is affordable, given the size of the payout that would have had to increase the payout to Mr Henry, which would have increased as a result of the Prime Minister's uh, comments, Mr Speaker. Uh, and, and, and it's... it's it's interesting, uh, Mr Speaker, to see the approach that has been taken uh, on, the, uh, on this legislation uh, by the government. I mean, in one sense, they are being very liberal. If one looks at Clause 16 of, of the bill, you can see the, uh, the preparation uh, that the government is making for having possibly Mormon or possibly Muslim um, governors-general. Uh, the people who as a result of the relationships I've entered into uh, outside the New Zealand jurisdiction, have the ability to have uh, more than one spouse uh, at a time. And that is the ability to split the spousal arrangements 
uh, is uh, part of this uh, legislation uh, that, is, uh, that we are dealing with today. So on the one hand, we have to congratulate the government for what they are doing uh, as to preparing for a wider range of Kiwis to become governors general, but at the same time we have to condemn them for the attitude of the Prime Minister when he appears to go in the opposite direction when being interviewed by Paul Henry. And I think it's now most New Zealanders have seen, if not the original uh, showing of it, a replay uh, of the Prime Minister giggling and smiling at the suggestion that someone who is of a different colour should not be, could not be a New Zealander, could not look like a New Zealander. Uh, Mr Speaker, we know going forward we are going to have a range of New Zealanders of a variety of colours as our Governor-General and they, will be the, they are the people for whom we are currently preparing and for whom we are considering uh, uh, legislation and, and um, certainly in, uh, in clauses uh, 6, uh, 8, uh, 9 uh, and, and 11, uh, there are areas of benefits for Governors-General or former Governors-General or spouses of Governors-General and in putting this legislation uh, through the House in a way which would have gone through uh, very, very easily, and I think possibly without debate, if the government had chosen a, a more auspicious time uh, to debate it, uh, rather than a time which followed so soon after the Prime Minister's decision to smile and giggle at Paul Henry's suggestion that people well, I, of colour used to be the old expression. I think black is probably the expression that, that many people uh, would use, but I think um, uh, probably knowing the Prime Minister, it could have been uh, brown as well. Uh, and, and the suggestion uh, that people who are not white-skinned... Uh, look, I'm going to caution the member. You're getting away, and I was... I quite expressly referred the member, and I'm guided by Speaker's rulings. The member is now stepping outside what the bill actually prescribes. Trevor Mallow. Uh, Mr Speaker, this bill prescribes for future's Governor-General, and I am saying that as we are passing this, we should be passing it for Governors-General of all colour, and no Prime Minister should giggle or smirk at the suggestion that someone who is not white the suggestion that someone who is not white is not suitable for being a Governor-General of New Zealand. And, sir, I say that is the key to this bill. It is a preparation for all Governors-General, not just for white Governors-General, as was the theme of the Paul Henry comments to which the Prime Minister responded with no, a giggle. Order, order. I think the member is now challenging my ruling. I have ruled. But the member can refer to the bill and make examples, but I believe the member is debating in a way which is outside my ruling, and I have ruled. Trevor Mallard. Well, Mr Speaker, um, I acknowledge that you ruled that way, and I would like to refer you, to start with, to clause 16 of the bill and suggest that you read that very carefully. I have. Because what that clause allows for is people with multiple spouses. It allows for government annuities to the former spouses of governors general. That allows for people who are Mormon, that allows for people who are Muslim, where there is a conflict as to the arrangements for the allowances that those people can get. Clearly those people cannot marry in a New Zealand system, but there is, not, there is nothing stopping a New Zealander entering into those marriages offshore and returning and being Governor-General. And if we had a truly Liberal Prime Minister, that would be something that would be being contemplated now. Sir, we do not have a Prime Minister 
who is prepared to lead the debate on this bill. And that's where I want to finish.